Welcome to Ho Chi Minh City, otherwise known as Saigon, the largest city of the stunning Southeast Asian nation of Vietnam. Today, Vietnam conjures up images of a young and dynamic population, great food, and a rich culture. Its long history also contains tragedies brought on by the horrors of war and invasion. I'm grateful to be here to learn and share more about how Vietnam has emerged from that past to be one of the most sought after destinations in the world today. Thanks for traveling with me. So behind me is the Ho Chi Minh City People's Committee building. It's effectively, from what I understand, the city hall of Ho Chi Minh City and carries out all the administrative duties of Ho Chi Minh City. And it is gorgeous. One of these beautiful 19th century French style buildings that has uh, stood through many different uh, changes of, of leadership of this country. And if this building itself wasn't stunning enough, just beyond it, thought I was getting yelled at by that guy. Just beyond it is this square where you have the Ho Chi Minh statue looking out in the city. So you really have to give it to communists. They really know how to project power in their display of their public buildings. You know, with the city hall and the Ho Chi Minh statue behind me, and that is gazing out at some of the more modern buildings in the city. Definitely some, some powerful imagery and uh, one that projects order and structure and power and uh, stuff that uh, communists aspire to. So behind me is one of the stops for the new Ho Chi Minh City Metro. And this thing has been under construction since 2012, but it's been delayed many, many times. The only people that have ridden it to this point are the ones that are building it. This should hopefully be finished in 2024 for the people of Ho Chi Minh City to enjoy some strong public transportation. So as you walk along the road here, it's so interesting because they have really a whole city block full of these boards explaining what the Politburo or the Communist Party has been up to. And it's really no different than the photos we see emerging from our elected officials in the United States or any other you know, Western democracy kind of promoting their activities, telling the public what they've been up to, what they've been voting on. It's pretty, pretty cool to, to come check it out and take a couple photos and have your phone translate it and see what they've been up to. One of the first things you notice walking around Ho Chi Minh City is the youth of Vietnam. Over half of their population is under 25 years old and they are thrilled to connect with travelers. I was fortunate to have this interaction pretty much as soon as I stepped out of my hotel on day one. Uh, my name is Vy. Vy? Yeah. And Vy, what, what school are you from and where, what are you doing today? Okay, uh, I'm from uh, Saigon Tourism College mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> Today, I, I have to lead uh, our team yes. uh, to talk to the foreigners about the speaking video. Wonderful. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Okay, thank you for thank your you. time. Oh, love Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> So now I'm uh, leaving Saigon Center, the rather bougie mall behind me and heading over to Benton Market. Benton Market has been around since like the 1870s. It's had a couple different iterations as it burned down a couple of times, had to be rebuilt, but it's called Benton Market, but for a long time it was just known as a Saigon Market. And uh, we're gonna go check it out. Really nice as you walk along the um, exterior of the market they have these fixed price shops so for people who aren't interested in bargaining and things like that they can just come to these fixed price shops and you can see like there'll be ten thousand dong probably um, so if you're not interested in in bargaining and haggling all that stuff you just come here pay the fixed price and then maybe you can go in and try your hand at bartering after that I tried to capture the diversity of things to buy here and it was not difficult. Everything from beautiful bouquets of flowers to fresher fish than I care to recall the smell of to some of the best knockoff clothing, shoes, and bags in the world. I was on a mission for some cement Jordan 3s, so I took off to navigate the maze of glowing stalls within the inner sanctum of Benton. 1.1. 1.1 1. 1. 1. 1. 1 million for the jacket and Vietnam football shirt. Yeah, okay, okay. 1.1. Merry Christmas. Yes, okay. <laughs> As you can 
see these shops get pretty narrow as you go in. So if you've never been to a market like this before, just prepare for a little bit of claustrophobia as you're trying to make your way through here and figure out what you want. Hello, it look like they have shoes. Looking, huh? looking for looking for shoes. Shoes. This way? Behind me? What what number is the best? Right here. You sure? All right. All right. All right. One of the issues I'm running into is that they don't have my size. No, he doesn't have a size? No, Okay. White? Uh, I'm looking for black. Obviously, as you can see, they have really good options here, but possibly not 11.5. Yeah? Can you help me? Of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put that shoe back for. So, we'll keep looking. In addition to all the Nikes and Jordans, this place has Gucci loafers, Yeezys, and New Balance galore. After striking a great deal for my threes, I was on my way. What's your name? Oh. Good deal. Good deal. <laughs> so I'm here at the War Remnants Museum here in Ho Chi Minh City. As you can see behind me, a lot of remnants of what we in America would call the Vietnam War. Now here in Vietnam, unsurprisingly, they call it the American War. Um, so after the Americans left in 1975, obviously a lot of military equipment and material and things like that uh, were left behind. And this is what came of that. So basically um, these materials were, were gathered up by the Vietnamese and they're displaying it here as a part of the acknowledgement that um, in their mind they they won the war and the Americans retreated and so it's it's a really really interesting collection of all these materials and uh, this museum was open pretty quick after 1975 and when the Americans left and when you're traveling to Vietnam especially as an American it's obviously one of those things that's really unavoidable the war and even when you're walking the streets of Vietnam any city really and understanding that you know your ancestors fought a war with their ancestors. It's pretty, it's pretty moving, it's pretty stirring. And honestly, at certain points, it's, it's really disturbing, um, you know, what was done in this country and to this country and its people. Um, that's why you come to museums like this, regardless of what country you're from, what side you think you may have supported or, or anything like that. You come to these museums to experience these things, to learn more, acknowledge the history. So really happy to be here and to, you know, get to know the story a little bit better. The museum pulls together collections of archival footage, newspaper clippings, and photographs of the war. One of the most devastating sections juxtaposes the words of the U.S. Declaration of Independence and stories from American newspapers with statistics regarding the massive loss of human life and the amount of weaponry used during the war. The level of destruction witnessed during this period is honestly hard to comprehend, and it's places like this that should be mandatory visits for any American running for president or any other world leader tasked with commanding a military. You leave places like this feeling certain that we'd have a far more peaceful world if those responsible for running it interacted with the consequences of war this intimately. After the heaviness of the War Remnants Museum, it was great to get back into the thick of modern Ho Chi Minh City and enjoy the hustle and bustle of this city of 8.4 million. From efficient public works efforts to beautiful street murals in progress, this city provides interesting sights around every corner. One of those sights is the Emperor Jade Pagoda. Like other communist countries, Vietnam is officially an atheist state. Despite this, a handful of religions have managed to flourish, with most Vietnamese identifying themselves with some combination of Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism. Alright guys, at this point I can't go any further without sharing Bun Cha with you. Bun Cha is a delightfully simple dish that is essentially just a soup with pork patties, sticky noodles, and veg. The best part about bun cha is that you're tasked with building your own bowl with however many noodles and herbs you want. Originating in the north, I assure you that they still make great bun cha in southern Vietnam. Also on the food front, 
No visit to Asia is complete without stopping in 7-Eleven and sampling the snacks. Asia produces the widest variety of snack foods I've ever seen, and it's always a trip to stop inside and sample some yourself. The next day I embarked on an all-day tour to visit the Kuchi Tunnels and the Mekong Delta. The Kuchi Tunnels are a network built by the Viet Cong soldiers during the war to launch guerrilla-style attacks in the south. It's fascinating to see what life was like down in these tunnels. They certainly weren't built for men of my size. <laughs> Just as the War Remnants Museum was a haunting look at this tragic period of history, it was chilling to walk through the Vietnamese jungle as a steady stream of gunshots rang out in the distance. These gunshots are being produced by a gun range at the end of the tour for anyone looking to try out a number of different firearms. The second part of the tour saw us cruising down the Mekong River and exploring the Delta. While the Mekong Delta in Vietnam infuses this part of the country with life, commerce, and a key mode of transportation, the Mekong River itself is the 12th largest in the world and flows through China, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, and Cambodia in addition to Vietnam. We got to sample some delicious local tea and fruits while enjoying some traditional Vietnamese folk music. Before jumping into even smaller boats to navigate some of the tributaries surrounding the Mekong River. This makes for a pretty magical ride as you float down this historic waterway with plants growing wildly over your head, framing the Mekong perfectly as you glide through its murky brown waters. A fitting end to a great tour had us enjoying the sunset before hopping back onto the bus to speed back to Ho Chi Minh City. The day wasn't quite over yet though as I made my way to Bue Vien Street to check out the city's quintessential backpacker party spot. Though my backpacker days are likely behind me, this was a fun stop. About to enter the madness of Bue Vien Walking Street. You can see the arches behind me. It's basically Vietnam's answer to Khao San Road in Bangkok. And as you can see, there's like a club with DJs right on the sidewalk. It looks pretty insane, but I'm gonna go check it out. It's only like 6.30 right now, so probably about six hours before it really kicks off, but we'll see how it's going right now. never been to Khao San Road or Bue Vien, I definitely recommend uh, at least coming and, and strolling through even if you don't stop for a drink but very good for people watching very good for just enjoying the lights and the sounds of uh, probably the loudest and brightest part of Ho Chi Minh City. As I grab one last bowl of bun cha I wanted to say thanks so much for checking out this video. I've got much more to come from Vietnam soon as well as a lot more great travel content on my channel. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to follow along for more.